thanks very much for joining us today. Um, we're so pleased we could do this in your soon to be opened W Hotel. We're excited to have you here. Um, now you're the pre-opening GM. Now mm -hmm. that requires a lot of work, a lot of um, you know, working with the designer, the contractor, there have been design changes. So tell us a bit more about what it was like for you to work as a part of a pre-opening team of such a major hotel. Actually, it's been a really great, fun-filled, playful, as well as dynamic process because the design of a W, it, it, it disrupts a true perception of what a luxury hotel should be like. So the design team for the owning company, working with the design team for W, uh, there's been a lot of very engaged and dramatic conversations, but always with the point of view of how do we, how do we make sure the customer gets the best of a W experience, but in a way that really um, fits comfortably with their, their expectation. So for example, a typical day, especially in the early days of the project, uh, the design team from the owning company would come into the office, I don't know, maybe 12 times a day and say, what do you think we should do about this? And what do you think we should do about that? And what would be the modern take on that? And it would be down to things like the names of the light switches, because they could just be on or off, or they could be soft or controlled lighting. And we said, but that would just be expected. So why don't we try and do something that's different? So then we set uh, lighting settings that were things like soft and seductive and playful and fun, which suddenly made that even just something as small as a light switch still could help us to tell a W story and put a smile on the face of a customer who's saying, okay, it's not just on or off, it's soft and seductive. So attention to detail is very important when it comes to what you do here. Um, now that obviously involves a very good team behind you. What was the hiring process like when you were choosing your executive team? Oh, I had an embarrassment of riches when it came to talent because W is such an iconic brand. So there's a lot of talent that get attracted to work for a hotel brand like that. Dubai is an incredible destination. So of course people leapt with enthusiasm at the opportunity to do a W together with a, a, a destination in Dubai. So I, we, had, we had riches of, of candidates, which was just great from a, a talent pooling point of view. Um, and then it's about uh, prioritizing where to start. And because BNF, because beverage and food is so much at the heart of a W, we first went to uh, hire our culinary and BNF specialists. Uh, so we had something in the region of uh, 200 uh, top candidates who applied. We got that down to a, a shortlist pretty quickly, and I think we've hired two really dynamic um, culinary creative geniuses, and I'm excited to see what we do. So did it take a very long time for you to select your, your handful of people that you are going to work with for the next few years? I can tell you that it took a long time to get our way through all the, the uh, CVs and resumes and candidates. That took a long time. But funnily enough, when the right candidate walks in the room, that's pretty smart. I mean, that, that process happens pretty quickly. So was it down to then working out who was the final person that we want? No, that was, that was pretty quick. That was almost instantaneous. Because you get the fact that people, they bring the, the vibe and the energy and the creativity, they bring it with them. And then when you see that, think what we could do, and you match the product that's being built with the talent that's interested, and what, uh, hopefully what we bring together is something quite special. I like to say when you know you know, so you obviously knew when to... Well, you know, when you go on a first date, how long does it take you to work out whether this is going to be the one for me or not? We think it's about four minutes. So, you know, when you meet an executive chef, maybe more than four minutes, but you know, I'm not going to live with him, right? Yeah, true. <laughs> Obviously, with a pre-opening hotel come the challenges from last minute design changes to maybe moving things around a little bit, uh, you know, or sometimes even a, sometimes a major overhaul. Um, what was that process like? What were some of the challenges you faced? If, if you've worked on an opening with me, uh, you will have heard this, this analogy maybe 27 times in the first couple of months. You know, there are only two kinds of openings. There are good openings and there are bad openings. In a bad opening, things go wrong. Maybe the opening date is difficult to pin down and maybe there are delays in some of the construction. 
in a bad opening, maybe there is uh, one position that proves to be particularly difficult to fill. So it takes you a while to, to find that particular role. In a bad opening, it could be that somebody forgets to order something really critical, something really important, becomes a big headache for everybody. And in a bad opening, there's normally a problem with maybe uh, water or Wi-Fi or aircon or power electricity, all these headaches. And you can feel the energy of the team is challenged as the process goes on because it, it's exhausting, it's frustrating, and it becomes a despondent process, and it becomes a bad opening. In a good opening, things go wrong. The opening date is hard to pin down and many processes get delayed and the, the construction delays the, the actual opening date. In a good opening, at least one position is really hard to fill and it becomes a big headache while you try and find exactly the right person. And in a good opening, there'll be problems with Wi-Fi or air conditioning or water or power. And in a good opening, somebody will forget to order something really important and it'll become a big headache. But in a good opening, the spirit of the team is so powerful, it's so positive, it's so solution-based, it's so always about how to forward, 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 how to take it better, how to fix it that the spirit of the team can conquer anything and it becomes a great opening. And any opening team who live by that mantra find that it doesn't matter what you throw into the mix, it's an amazing, fantastic adventure and there is nothing like it for creating those bonds of colleague and friendship that make for a great hotel team. What makes your hotel brand stand out from the crowd? You know, when the first W opened in 1998, it it was first to market. It was the first that moved into that lifestyle space. It was the first hotel brand that said, okay, move the action into the lobby. The lobby's not just for checking in. Put the bar in the lobby, put the DJ, turn the lights down, hire some great looking people and you create a whole different vibe about it. And we've been doing that since 1998. Many have entered the space since then, that's true. But I, I like to think that there's an advantage to being first mover in the space. And W have continued to evolve into the most dynamic of the creative brands. And we like to call ourselves a, the luxury rebel. You know, we're in the luxury space. We're giving the experience of the ultimate of personalized service, but in such a way that is for the guest who still wishes luxury, but in, in a way that is not just a traditional way of experiencing five star. So for example, we think that there are guests out there who, you know, he wears a beautiful Armani suit, but he's got tattoos underneath. Or we think that, you know, he, he comes in there and he, you know, maybe she's got pink highlights in her hair, but she's still got good manners and she still knows how to behave in a luxury environment. And we think that there is a customer who, who craves that experience, that authentic, enriching experience by which they get to express their passion points, music, design, fuel, and fashion and in such a way that uh, makes a luxury experience different from others. Now, coming back to talking about your team, um, what is your leadership style like when it comes to your team? Oh, that's a great question. I, I suppose really we'd ask them, but if you ask me, um, I, I like to work in a, a, a style that says you, everything is possible and there's a solution to everything. So normally if somebody would present an issue, uh, coming in the door and saying, you know, here's, here's something to be fixed or here's something to be resolved. Um, the first question would normally be, okay, so what, what are you planning to do about that? Or what, what solutions have you already thought about? So I, I think there is a solution and an answer to everything, which an, an opening is pretty key. Um, but more than anything, I, uh, I like to find creative um, ways of expressing ourselves. And I think sometimes the greatest disruptors of a W are the talent, not just the hotel guests. So I think the fact that um, m most of the really crazy out there ideas that we've installed into this, this project plan, most of them have come from the talent and not from the GM. So the people who are rocking the foundations of the W Palm actually is our team and not me. So it's all about teamwork and working together. Yeah, and about creating an environment by which people really feel that I can express myself. And there's, there's people who know far more about music, fashion and design than I do. Um, so this is their opportunity for them to really disrupt the landscape of this property. Um, and your team is balanced very well. Um, there are a lot of women on your team as well. Uh, now that is a topic of discussion that hoteliers, especially in the Middle East, find very close to their heart. Um, you had an amazing career in um, South Asia, mm -hmm. uh, Southeast Asia, yeah. um, and London for a bit. You were named the Woman uh, of Hospitality um, in 2011 um, 
you know, Asia's leading woman in hospitality in 2011. Um, what made you decide to move to the Middle East into a region where there are not that many women in hospitality at leadership positions? Well, I love that question. So I can tell you honestly that I, I lived in London for 20 years and then I came to a big birthday. You know, a birthday that's got a zero in it, you know, it does funny things to your head. And I thought, you know what, I'm either going to live in London for another 20 years or I'm going to go and have an awfully big adventure. And when I was throwing around the ideas of, or will I or won't I, shall I, shan't I, the person who encouraged me to do it was my mother who just said, you go girl, get on a plane, just go. You know, if you don't like it, what's going to happen? You, you don't like it, the world is small, you come back, it doesn't work. Um, and so then I decided to do the job that was the most different from London. So I moved to Northern Thailand, where I was pretty much the only Phalang, the only foreigner in, the, in that part of the world, and had the most amazing two years opening a hotel up there. Then four years in Langkawi, I became uh, uh, Asia's leading woman in hospitality. I think that was more down to the director of marketing that wrote the, uh, the application than, than what I did myself, but that was really good fun. Then China, then KL. And then I, um, I had the opportunity really for this brand, this product and this particular project and it was intoxicating because these owners have such a vision of truly how to embody the spirit of, of W and have brought in some great partners to really bring that to life. So it, it was something I did not know how to walk by. We've got, for example, uh, the legend that is Massimo Batura who's going to headline our major um, BNF offering. And uh, I, I, I confess, I get a little bit starstruck when, when he's in the room and in the space. So things like that, you just think, okay, this, this isn't going to come along uh, more than once in my career, so I can't pass this by.